How's it going guys? So before we get started, I just wanted to give a shout out to Best Fiends, which is my new mobile gaming obsession and who was actually kind enough to sponsor this video. Best Fiends is my favorite mobile game as of late. In fact, it's actually, I think, the only mobile game that I am playing as of late. So this bad boy combines everything you love about those uh, matchy in a row puzzle games with everything you love about those other games where you collect different characters and grow them and power them up. Each character or fiend has different abilities that you can use to help defeat the evil slugs. Connect as long a chain as you can, collect items, grow your fiends, unlock new characters and quests, and try to see if you can pass me. I am currently on level 43, but I'm also like a slow and steady kind of gamer. So click the link in the description to download and play for free. Doesn't matter if you got an iPhone, Android, doesn't matter. And I guarantee you, you will be hooked before long. Thanks again so much to Best Fiends for sponsoring this video. And speaking of which, I say let's, uh, let's get started with it, shall we? Hey guys, how's it going? So I don't know if you guys know this, but March, which just finished, was uh, by by Health Month. Is that by Health Awareness? By Health Awareness Month. I didn't even know that was a thing until uh, my friends at the LA Bike Task Force told me about it. They saw, you know, that you guys know the series I do. They thought we might, you know, continue this series with Ask a Buy Expert. I'm here with Anais, Hi. and uh, not only is you know she a member of our community personally, but also professionally. You've done work with uh, the LA Bite Task Force, the LGBT Center. I also work with Colors. Colors, that's right. That's that was the one I was forgetting. Started training. What makes therapy LGBT affirmative? So affirmative meaning like we're celebrating, right? Yeah. So when I come in and have someone that's really curious hones in on certain issues that are particular to you as an LGBTQ individual. Cool, and then we're actually gonna talk about that because I asked you guys to submit some questions on uh, Twitter and we got a really great crop of questions. Let's go. Let's do it. So what sort of mental health issues are bi people more susceptible to? First of all, invisibility. Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. The idea that we don't exist. Bi Health Awareness Month also focused on youth this year. That was the theme. That's right, yes. Bisexual youth are more susceptible than their gay and lesbian counterparts um, to bullying and suicidality. Right. Our bi women tend to be more victims of like domestic assaults. Mm -hmm. IPV, um, yeah. sexual harassment, which I think brings in the objectification part. I didn't even know, like at first I was like, why do we need a month? And then they started explaining this mm -hmm. stuff to me and I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, we need a month. So how does internalized homophobia or biphobia uh, impact someone's mental health? Nice uh, use of language, by the way. I mean, I, could, I feel like I could share my own experience with this. I feel right. like a lot of people could. Yeah. Where do you turn, right? You've you've received these messages, mm -hmm. whether it's from your family, your community, or society yeah, everywhere. Large, yeah, right, everywhere. And these messages can be internalized. And when they're internalized, what do we do with them? For me, it was like I couldn't accept myself for the longest time because it just wasn't a valid thing. It was yeah. like everybody was telling me I needed to go one mm -hmm. way or the other. I feel like that's this a case for a lot of internalized people with internalized biphobia. Totally. And I think it's important to note that it comes from everywhere, not just I hate to bash the families all the time. People come into therapy and have this idea that like, oh, mom and dad, but it's not. Oh, it's true. That, or whatever your providers are. I never heard the word in a, an affirmative context until college. Totally. Yeah. So me that's either. everywhere. Meeting a gender genuine out bisexual person, I was like, oh, so it is a thing. I Very important. An out bisexual person until I came to California. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I- 100% serious. Are you of the school of thought that everyone's a little bit bi? I think the jury's out on that one. <laughs> How is the jury out on that one? It depends on who you talk to and it depends totally. on your and it depends on your definition of it, I guess, too. Yeah, and that's a really good point. I think it depends on how we're defining it. Bisexuality meaning the potential, not necessarily at the same time or in the same capacity. Yeah. So it's not this 50-50 thing. And then we want to think about the terms fluid, pansexual, mm -hmm. queer. There's a lot of people that identify as queer too, and we want to mm -hmm. honor that. Language is a big one. Do you think that uh, most people have at least some fluidity in their sexuality? I would be willing to say, and this is backed up by research, that yeah. Women have more potential for fluidity. Okay. Fluidity. Do you think it's uh, more just documented because women are more open about it, or do you think that's actually? That's a good point. Yeah, that's yeah. that's I the mean, whole that's thing. Something we don't know. And I think it, attraction can be broken down in so many ways too, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can be a lesbian that likes to have a threesome with a cisgender man. Behavior versus attraction versus romance versus like it's just. So yes, complex. All of it. Does bisexual representation within the media have any impact on how people see bisexuality or perceive oh, it? Of course it does. Mm -hmm. I um, do a workshop with youth actually catered towards like 
by representation. Really? Media. Okay. We have Grey's Anatomy. We have Callie and Grey's Anatomy. That's okay. Funny. Well, she I, says the word bisexual. She on does. The show. Oh, does she? Okay. Yes. We do not see that a lot. People right, say yeah. Bisexual. Normally, it's I don't do labels. Right. Or like it's just not talked about. Right, right, for sure, yeah. So that's contributing to invisibility, I would say. Do you think it counts? It depends. Like Kevin Spacey in mm -hmm. House of Cards. Would he count? There's the one like threesome scene that I show in the workshop. You're oh, like, I've, got it. I'm, <laughs> I'm well one. acquainted with that scene. <laughs> but it's so interesting though, too, like when he wakes up in the morning and goes into the kitchen and like, no, no one talks about anything. Like there's very there's underlying just tones of like we're not talking about it. Little things like that in media that I would like to see shift a little. But I think it's important celebrity speaking out about it too. We have Anna Paquin, Margaret mm -hmm. Cho is amazing. I love um, her. Alan Cumming, Alan Cumming. Mm -hmm. Bowie, God rest him. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how much do you think that finding a bi role model on TV or etc. helps young bi's in their psychology and their mental health? I think it's a double edged sword. It can help and hurt. Okay, how so? I mean, well, there are characters, right, that could hurt, right? These That's expectations true. of like what being bisexual is, or whatever it is you identify as, again, for the sake of this, we'll say bi plus, meaning bi, yeah. pan, fluid, queer. And the question becomes like, what works for you? Where do you find yourself in characters on television or in books or in comics? A lot of kids that I work with bring up comics a lot. Um, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Dokken, one of my favorites. Wolverine's son is bisexual. Oh, mm -hmm. didn't know that. Deadpool, Deadpool is pan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Have you found in your um, in your practice that like yeah, when kids have a character that they identify with, like mm -hmm. ha does, has that helped them? Yes. There's mirroring there. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't have it in your family, or maybe like say you live in a certain region where there's not a lot of support, or you don't know where to look, right? Maybe there's support, but you're unsure of where to go. Turn it's to television. Turn to your comic book. Whatever it is. Whatever that one character is. Mm -hmm. Or YouTube. You get through a lot. YouTube. Or YouTube. Yeah. A surprise. A wild Dobby appeared. Uh, how do you deal with negative comments from, uh, or not supporting comments from your close family or friends? Good question. I'm sure we, that could be its own video as well. Yeah. I think I have more of a sense of humor about it now, and I'm learning to kind of pick my battles. Okay. So there's a way to balance like the activist side of me, which is wanting to swoop in and... Okay. Biphobic! <laughs> but also just like pick your battles. Mm -hmm. Easier said than done, I realize. Yes. Value the people that do kind of see you for who you are. And are curious about your story. Curiosity is a big thing for me. Yeah, um, totally. There's like active and passive biphobia or bi right. that I see where it's like, usually if, if it's a passive one, you can usually just be like, you mean same sex couple, not gay couple. Yes, I'm learning to be less defensive, I think, too, to, to the people that actually really don't know. There are those people as well that don't realize. It's true. I think also, though, even dealing with, like, the active biphobia, it's, mm -hmm. um, I've found that a lot of times it's it's more just like a waiting game as far as, like, they'll say, oh, it doesn't exist, it's just a right. phase, whatever, and then by continuing to live your life openly and demonstrating that it's not a phase, that Modeling. eventually, right, right, that ev right. eventually they'll just be like, Huh. It may take, you know, a few years. Right. It's just this constant, like, we do get caught up with labels, I think, too, and that can it's, be really hard for people. It's true. What is your experience of being bisexual? You know, it's because all someone sitting next to you could identify as bi or pan. And we all have different experiences of it. How does bi erasure impact healthcare for bisexuals? This is one that I would want to ask, like, myself, because I don't, this is, I'm really curious about this. Like, how well do therapists, doctors, etc. treat bisexuality? I feel like it depends on where you are. Totally depends on where you are. What difference does it make then in terms of mental health or even physical health? By erasure. For sure. That's the key. Okay. I would just to make sure like for clinicians, for doctors, for any leader in a community mm -hmm. to seek out the education because we are not the gay and lesbian community. We are not the heterosexual community. As much as we love them both. <laughs> yes, but there would be nothing more affirmative than going into a doctor. I don't know if you're out to all your physicians. I am, you. yes. Yeah. Going in and sitting in front of a doctor and being able to say I identify as bisexual and having someone again be curious about that and be educated. I know that people I've known have been like out to their doctors and they're like, oh, well, we have to give you an, uh, you know, an uh, HIV test right off the bat just because you know so that's right. that's a good clue for not for, for not what to do right. being aware of the risk is not the same thing as assuming <laughs> things that you need to do any way you can find support seek out the resources use online resources like yes. find the people right seek out the by um, task force seek out BRC is another great one the by resource center by net USA there are no numerous oh, things love that yeah yes Trevor project is awesome they've been yeah they've been really really great yeah. last question Question. Thank you so much to Punk Out for this question, by the way. How can gay and lesbian people be a better support 
for bisexual people? Such a good question. I love this question. I love it. Call out biphobia when you see it. Yes. I think it's my fur, like first, and why are you licking her? No. If so, if you have bisexual people in your life that do identify as that, that's the first thing, obviously. Support yeah. them. Go beyond that though. Um, mm -hmm. Show up at the bi events, right? If there's them. Fight for us every day, whether it's online or in your own community. Do what you can. I think there's not enough of us being allies for each other within the LGBTQ community. Totally. And that's a, another whole separate video and conversation. <laughs> Call out like the little biphobia. Mm -hmm. As far as when people say, a gay couple, you mean same sex couple. Yeah. Yeah. Or opposite sex color, you know, just just yeah. just even being mindful of that can just work wonders. And yeah. Check your assumptions. Check your assumptions at the door all the time. Mm-hmm. It's something that everybody's got to do. Be includes. willing to like look at your own. Yeah. And work through it. Nobody's born knowing this stuff, so yeah. definitely just be open. Yeah. Yeah. This has been amazing. I hope hopefully this has been as informative for you guys as it has been for me. If you've got any other uh, questions you would like for me to answer with future guests, or maybe she comes back, or who knows, knows. Put them in the comments below. You can tweet them at me using the hashtag AskABisexual. Thank you so much to LA by Task Force for helping me out with yeah. this video. Thanks so much to Best Fiends for sponsoring us. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. This is Anais. I'm RJ, Thank not you. Adam. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.